I, I want to talk about this morning the power of unity. And uh, because it's, it, it is a, an important thing of where we're going from, where we're at, where we're going with this. And next week is such a big thing. And I, I want to even kind of segue into where I'm going to take you guys next week. And, and it is a big deal. Where I'm going to take you guys spiritually with the Word of God and study, it's a big deal. But uh, this is, we're going to see the church in action. The book of Acts is the transitional book where they were given the Holy Spirit of God. And I mean, it was, they, they went from the law and now they have the Spirit of God and the church is launching and all these things are happening. The disciples are going out saying he is alive and we serve a risen God and the power of salvation, the cross and the resurrection and all these things that mean a lot of things are happening. And this, this message began to spread. It's powerful. The message that we have of the gospel is powerful. But let me tell you the way that it is, and I'll end up preaching what I want to preach next week. If, if this is the cure, if this is the cure for humanity, and we don't do anything with it, it's no longer a cure for humanity. It's a theory. You know what I'm saying? But when we take the Bible and we go give it to people, it changes lives. And, and that's what we do. And you're seeing this. Man, they're, they're, the, the darkness, the evil, the sin was in the world just like it is. People say, man, things have gotten so bad. Things have gotten bad because we've had so many seasons of good in America. Man, the revivals and churches growing and all the things that we're doing. But I'll show you throughout history, sin has always been bad, okay? Society has always had to struggle with the struggles that we have in society with, with sin and all the things that are going on and the opposition. We see that in this passage. Now, now notice Acts eleven twenty one, And the hand of the Lord was with them. Man, that right there is just, oh, I want that. You know, just like the hand of the Lord. Because what I'm about to read after that is not possible without the hand of God. And it's a visual that God gave us to say, it's not about you. It is not about us. Man, I am saved. I'm a born again. But I tell you, the Bible said, Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. You can't do it. The power has to from, come from God. And, and, and the vision has to come from God. It's not us. And the hand of God, you know, I just, I love that visual. I, I, I want to see that as, as I preach for God to be like, uh, you know, like that visual, or as we witness, as we teach our classes, as we lead our life groups, as we witness to the lost. Man, the hand of the Lord was with them. And a great number believed. And they turned unto the Lord, turned from darkness and sin and problems and, and anxiety and depression and drugs and everything. And they turned unto the Lord. We're talking about unity, they, they were unified in their purpose. This church was unified in their purpose. The hand of God was with them. You could see the presence of God, people being saved. And I love how the Bible says this, in a great number believed. Do you, do you understand what it is saying right there? It wasn't just a few, but when we look at it and see what's going on there, it is a great number serving and a great number being reached. We sit there and say, well, why isn't God doing greater things? And God says, why isn't more people doing things? Great number turned on the Lord because a great number was pointing people to the Lord. This is, this is how the church works. Jump down to verse 29. I'm just setting up the rest of my message. Then the disciples, when every man according to his ability. Maybe we need to circle in our Bibles the every man part, okay? It doesn't say in the preachers and the staff and the leadership team or the deacons or the trustees or whatever. It says, then the disciples, every man according to his ability determined to send relief unto the brethren which dwelt in Judea. Every man, every person, every one of them, according to their ability. You sit there and say, I can't do what so-and-so does. And I'm not like Pastor Tony or Pastor Dave. Or, you, know, you, you say, I'm not like them. And God says, just do what you can do. Do what you've been created to do. You know, that's one of the beauties of the church As I look over the audience and you're, you're like, I'm not like so-and-so. And God says, yeah, that's why I brought you here. You know, it's like the body of Christ illustration that he gave us. He said, shall the hand say to the foot, I have no need of you. It's not like that. It's, it's a matter of all of us were created differently. We all have a different purpose and we all do this. But they were together. We are, we are not the same on purpose, but they were together. We, we serve together. And whatever God has blessed me with, whether it's finances, talent, words, resources, whatever, knowledge, we use it for the glory of God. And revival was happening. Satan's not going to tolerate that. 
Uh, that, that, that's where we're going, because you're going to see Satan will not sit back and allow Christian people to point. Did you see how I just said, and the hand of God was upon them? Let's keep reading. Next chapter. Chapter 12, verse 4. Church, chapter 12, verse 1. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands. He said, yeah, I, I, I want in on this. And by the way, Satan will always do that. He said, man, why, why is there opposition? Why is there problems? Why is there trials? Because any time you rise up to serve God, Satan will rise up to stop you. And sometimes people don't understand that because they're thinking, Pastor Tony, I'm, I'm serving God and I'm doing what's right and I'm faithful and my kids are in church and my husband and I pray over our kids and all this. And man, we're going through it. And I was like, praise God. I said, no, 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 don't say praise God. No, the thing is, if, if we're not agitating the devil, he's never going to do anything to you. Yeah, that, that, as long as you're lukewarm and you're passive and you're not doing anything. So, man, man this church was doing something. And then and the king stretched forth his hand. He saw the hand of God and he was going to put his hand in the situation to vex certain of the church. The word vex means to injure, to make an evil effect, to mess them up. I'm going to mess you up. That's the, the, he said, I am not going to tolerate this. I will do whatever it takes to mess you up. And he killed James, the brother of John, with a sword. Satan has come to seek, kill, and destroy. And because he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. In the days of unleavened bread, and, and when they had apprehended him, he put him in the prison and delivered him to the four quadrants of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. I'll tell you, Satan doesn't play fair. It, it says to make an evil effect, or the meaning there is to take out leaders, to destroy families. He's not just trying to do this, he is doing it. You see the application of what he says that he took out a sword and he took one of them out. It's not a coincidence. It's not an accident. You guys, there, there's, there's casualties. Sin is real and, 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 it's, and it's around us. And the Bible says that Satan is a roaring lion seeking, seeking whom he may not, not flirt with or what, whom he may devour. He's after those that are making a difference because in that verse it says there were certain people certain Christians. It named John. It named Peter. Verse 4, when he had apprehended him, he put him into prison and delivered to him four quadrants of soldiers to keep him intending after Easter. Verse 6, and Peter, and when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains, and the keepers of the door kept him in prison. Now I'm a visual person, so I, I have to do this. So, Greg, can I borrow you? I'm going to use you as Peter. Come on up here. I, 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 want, I want you to see, if you'll, if you'll stand right here, this is, this is what he did. He goes out there and Satan's saying, you know, I'm not going to, that, that dude's making a difference. That I'm not going to tolerate that. Don't ever underestimate the power of Satan. You say, he's a, he's a leader, he's this or that. And Satan says, no, he's a victim. I'm going to take him out. That's what he does. And I want you guys to notice that there was a deliberate way that I didn't just have people on the stage. I want you to see that he deliberately went over and took somebody because Satan's goal is to cause division. Yeah, I'm talking about the power of unity. Let me t explain to you Satan's plan is always division. Anything that he can do to get between you and your kids, he's going to do it. Anytime you come home and you're like turning your back and I'm not talking to her, man, you just said, you just cheered on the devil for what he's doing in your house. God is a God of unity. He pulls us together. The body fitly joined together. Every joint meets. Every muscle works together. Every foot with the hand and everything comes together to work together. He wants to pull us out of joint is what he does. He was going after a leader to pull him out to try to say, I've got power and I can do something and I'm going to use my power to manipulate you and pull you out. And that's what he was doing in this passage. So here he is, and they pull out Peter, and they stick him in the situation. And notice what he's doing. Literally in this passage, literally sleeping between two, bound with chains, doors are locked, guards at the door, down this hallway with two guards at the end, locked with the gate at the end of that, literally putting him in into a possible situation, saying, you know what, there's nothing you can do about it. That's what Satan likes to do. He likes to go to the church and say, hey, I'm going to pick on you. 
and I'll go after your dads and your teachers and your pastors and your leaders and your moms and your teens and your kids and I'll put them into prison and I'll place them in bondage of depression or anger, anxiety, drugs or whatever it is and I will pull them out of there and it's not always sin. Sometimes it's just just a matter of going through a hard time or discouragement or whatever. Anything, anything, his arsenal is so big to divide. Because anytime he divides us, we're weaker. That's, that's why I think it's Ecclesiastes that talks about a, a strain of three is not easily broken. We use that in marriage a lot of times. It takes a husband and wife and, and God, and, and we're stronger together. I, I preach the whole message on stronger together. But this is the situation. This is, this is where they're at. He's, he's bound. He's in a situation that may, maybe not even the guy there can handle it by himself. You say this is bad. It gets worse. He's waiting to die. But notice the verse that I skipped. Go back to verse 5. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison. But, you know, I love that. So laugh, but, 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 stop. Let me tell you the rest of it. It doesn't stop there. I mean, it's like, oh, this is bad. And then and, and the Bible goes into so much detail explaining what's going on in the situation and the severity of it. And he stops and says, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. You're, you're going to see that, that there was the power of what was going on through their reach, but they were also united in their problems. You say, why is that important? Because in this world, people have problems. Let me just prove that right now. If you have issues this morning, raise your hand right now. Okay, for the rest of you, your issue is lying. <laughs> okay, so if you didn't raise your hand. We all have issues. Some of them are big issues. Some of them are huge issues. Some of them are issues that we just got over. Some of our issues are our kids' issues or our, our, our other people's issues. We all have issues. This was an issue. It was, it was a church issue. It was a person issue. It was, it was a division issue. It was, it was an issue. Verse 12, And when they considered the thing, they came to the house of Mary, the mother of John. They, they, they considered that they, it was on their heart and mind. It bothered them. He's one of us. Where many were gathered together praying. Here's, here's the church. It's like, hey, Peter's in a bad spot. He's not alone. Let, let me show you what happens when people are going through a hard time. Do you know what happens is we don't go the other way. Bob, Peter's going through a hard time. You say, what are you doing? And a lot of times we, we sit there and say, well, that's bad. You know, they're in a tough spot. Gary, Peter's in a bad spot. Let me help you. Peter's in a bad spot. Lord, would you mind helping? Peter's in a bad spot. Rick, would you mind helping? Peter's in a bad spot. You say, what are you doing? I'm, I'm really, I'm showing you guys something. You say, this is, what did the church do? The church, when they considered the matter, they ran the other way. They said when they considered the matter, the church came together. And, and I thought about this. They couldn't get Peter out of where they were at, but they did what every person could do within their ability. Did you see that, guys? In that passage, they did what they could do in their ability. And sometimes there's people that we can't reach and we can't change their circumstances, but I'm going to tell you, and I've thought about this because and they pray together, and sometimes we struggle with this because, let's be transparent. I, I, I like being transparent. I like telling you my questions and thinking and I'm thinking, if my prayer life is so positive, uh, powerful, and I can pray and, and move mountains, why should I ever have to go to you guys and say, I need you to pray with me? You know what I'm saying? Because the idea is, if God's hearing my prayer, and we say, I want to get as many people as possible praying, and I go, why? Is my prayer not good enough? Is God up in heaven going, man, should I help Peter? And, and God's up there going, how many people are praying? Lord, right now there's about 35. Let's get those numbers up. <laughs> Let's drive those numbers up. The white angels are on whiteboards up there. Lord, our stats are going up. You know, it's like, hey, we're getting it in there. It's like, let's get some kids involved in this. And let's get some Sunday school classes. Then we'll come through for Peter. You know, and, and, and it's all, almost weird. But then I started thinking about what God is doing. 
If Satan is out to divide, you realize through our prayers or our burdens, what we do is we come together. And if somebody's going through cancer or somebody's going through a car accident or somebody's going through a hard time, God said, yeah, I want the church to have a love. Let brotherly love continue. There's a love for the family. There's a love for Peter. There's a love for one another. And let me show you what's going on. You talk about the power of unity and the power of this problem. Every one of these guys have something different. Number one, let me show you what's going to happen. Let just, just bring it down to real life in this. When God says that they came together, Bob is able to do something for Chris in the midst of their pain for Peter, for Greg. And, and I, I, my, my sister, you guys know, it was like 10 years ago now that she went through and she almost took her life and life flight at the hospital in three months in ICU. And we, I've told this story a thousand times, we, we went down there. But I remember going to the hospital, going through that door, and there's my family. There's my family. And you know what the thing is? I couldn't, I couldn't get back in that ICU to help my sister. I, I didn't know medically what she was going through. I physically could not change her situation. But I tell you, something began to happen. And I realized I wasn't alone. And I had friends. And that comfort that we find... Oh, I'm not going to leave you guys out. They're <laughs> like... He's mad at them. There, there's comfort. And I, I think when we, when we call attention to something that's been divided and something that's been hurt and something that's been separated and an attack that Satan has brought in, God begins to bring us together, to band us together, to help with whatever the issue is. And you say, I can't do anything. God says, greater is he that is in you. That, that's what we're about to see through all of this. And there's, there's unity and there's glory. And I can tell you that God honors and God blesses this and God draws us together. This is the church. This is strength. This is power. This is glory. Is God, but the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 12, 26, and whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. And if they rejoice, they all rejoice together because we're family. We find comfort and unity and knowledge and hope and encouragement through all of these things. Because every one of these guys, when they come together, have something to offer. You think about it, Galatians 6.1 where it talks about restoration, bringing people together. And then it says, bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. You see, what they're doing is they're each bringing something to kind of lift the burden up. And you say, in that situation, it was beyond what they could do. And in a lot of the situations that we face, you say, I, I have a lost relative, or I have someone that has cancer, or I have someone that's far away from God, or whatever it is. But notice this, verse 5 again, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church to God. Every one of these were united in the fact that they believed in God. I believe that God can make a difference. I can believe that God can restore this situation. I believe that God is more powerful than that. I believe that God can rise above. I believe in God. And the thing is, Satan will try to do anything constantly to divide. I don't want you guys agreeing. You should be mad at them. And oh, look at what he's doing over there and everything. He's constantly trying to do that because he's constantly trying to destroy the unity that we have as a church. Constantly. It's like you better be careful what you post on Facebook. You better be careful the comments that you drop. You better be careful the rudeness that you have. You better be careful when you're not walking through church with eyes of compassion and grace and truth because he's out to divide us. There's, there, there's, there was the unity of them working together for, for the sake of the gospel. There was unity in, the, in their problems, but then there was unity through the power of God. Look at what God does through all this. You guys stay up here, okay? Remember how this all started with the hand of the Lord was upon them. God doesn't put his hands on sin. Let, let me show you the only way that there can be unity of this so you, the fact that you guys had to eliminate whatever would divide you to come together. Amen. You think about that. If you guys were mad at each other, or if you guys had division or strife or whatever, you would not be standing together. There would be none of this right here, which the, brings comfort. There would be none of that. And Satan loves that. So the fact if you guys are coming together, it literally means that you kicked out strife, anger, bitterness, all that other stuff. You got it out. I don't want it. We, 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 we reject it. 
Because that's what Satan uses in all those situations of there. The Bible says, but thou art holy, O that thou did inhabit the praise of Israel. He, he, he steps in, he dwells, he loves this. When, when God's people are working together, he's like, man, I love being here. Let me give you an illustration. We were on our way to Disney World. And you guys know that that is a long drive. And it's a lot cheaper than flying five and renting a car. But you pay the price for it. We have all the entertainment value, all the things and the screens and the Wi-Fi in the car and all that other stuff. But then it starts. You know, you're going, luggage in the back, tickets for Disney World. You know, you got our Mickey ears. I mean, the whole, we're set. We're ready to do this thing. And in the back seat, you hear, get off my side. <laughs> that's, not my, that's not your side. You get you, your stuff off my side. And I'm like, stop, guys. Come on. This, nobody has a side. It's my van. So he was like, <laughs> it's my side. You know, and then they serve it. they're going back and forth, or whatever. And by the time they're, I'm sick of you, and you're so stupid, blah, 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 you know, and he's just like, yes, I'm a pastor. My kids aren't perfect, okay? And your kids aren't either, so quit judging. There is no joy, no peace, no unity, no, no nothing that happens in that situation. Actually, I, I'm like, I'd rather go home than drive all the way and deal with this. This brings joy and glory to God. The church coming together in a time of need or a time of hurt or a time of division or whatever, that, put it in your brain, brings glory to God. Because in the world that's all full of division, you know, I'm a Democrat, I'm a Republican, I'm an Independent, I'm this, I'm for this, or that, and Facebook, and we're all dividing, dividing, dividing. I'll tell you what unites us is Jesus Christ. I am a believer. I believe in Jesus Christ. I'm going to heaven. I have the word of God. I stand firm on the rock of Jesus Christ. I believe in the local church. I believe in family. And that's where I say, and that's what brings these guys together. So they're praying because there's power in prayer, and they did what they could in every one of them. And through this, and he was kept in prison, verse 6. And when Herod would brought them forth, he was sleeping between the two soldiers. Okay, and you sit there and say, it's a bad situation. I don't care how bad the situation is. My God is bigger and better. The whole point of this story of explaining how severe it was, was to emphasize that God is greater. They are praying that there, there's no sin that God can't overcome. There's no person that he cannot reach. There's no distance that God cannot go. Behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him. Here's the power of prayer. And, 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 he, and, he, and a light shined in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And the chains fell off of him. By the way, the Spirit of God is able to do through us what we could not do ourselves. They could not get into that jail. They could not drop those chains. They could not break the bondage. But God did. And a lot of times we're sitting there going, They're hung up on drugs. They're in this or whatever. I think, I think they're a lost cause. There are no lost causes with God. God made a way. God kicked open the door. There's an angel standing in there because of the prayer of all of them reaching out through their prayers. The angel comes in and says, hey, I'm going to hear on behalf of the church to get you out of here. Kicks him there, opens the door, drops his chain, leads him out of there. All these things are going on. Know this. I, I love this story. Let's read it. Verse 8. And the angel said, and occurred thyself, bind up thy sandals. And so he did. And he said, then cast a garment about thee and follow me. And he went out and followed him, and wist not what was true, which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. He's waking up going, this, ain't, this can't be real. What in the world? You know what? I'm, I'm not saying that angels are going to kick open doors and break people out of prison. If that's what your prayer is, it might be off, okay? But I can tell you that the Spirit of God is able to work in ways that you could never get to or do or manipulate yourself. I love how it says in he put in the light and allowed him to see. He opened the door that he could not open. He led him in a path. And I, I think of our lost relatives or people that we care about that are stuck in something. You say, Lord, I don't know if they'll ever get out. They're stuck in that sin. They're this. And the power of God goes before us and does what we could not do. Verse 10, when they passed the first and second war, they came upon the iron gate and he led them into the city and he opened up his own accord. And they went out and passed through on the streets 
And forthwith the angel departed from him, led him all the way there. And Peter was come to himself. He was like, whoa, what in the world? He said, now I know surely that the Lord has sent his angel and delivered me out of the hand of Herod for the, from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. Whatever they intended to do and all their expectations, God overcame that. It doesn't matter the devil's agenda. God's agenda is bigger. But notice it came as a result of the prayers, the unity of the house of God and God's people. You say prayer doesn't make a difference. This is proof of that. So he comes to the house where the people were praying. And Peter knocked on the door of the gate in verse 13. And the damsel came and hearkened unto him named Rhoda. And knew not that it was Peter's voice. And she opened the gate for gladness and ran in and told the Peter stood before the gate. And they said unto her, thou art mad. Woman, you are crazy. Get back in here and start praying for a miracle. And she's like, oh, the miracle's at the door. Come on, you know. And it, it, it's, just, it's just, what in the world? This doesn't happen this way. But she constantly affirmed that it was even so and said, it is the angel. But Peter continued knocking. And when they had opened the door, they saw him and they were astonished. Can I put it like this? God does astonishing things through the prayers of his people. God does astonishing things through the unity of the church. Satan will do anything, anything to take this away from us. But you know what he does when he does it? When we have resistance and he's like, hey, we're going to bind you in this prison. We're going to do this. You go, okay, you want to do that? Then I'm going to do this. And I'm going to stand with my brothers. And I'm going to stand tall and I'm going to do what's right. You say, well, what are you going to do? I'm going to turn to the one that can make the difference. You guys can be seated. I say this because the fact is Satan does not play fair. You say, well, I can't believe God would go after or allow Peter or whatever. Man, he doesn't play fair. He will snatch up our kids. He will grab. He does all this. He manipulates. He, he does all this. And, and the, the power of what God does through all this is, is, is right here. What would have happened in that situation if the church would not have come together? Let me ask you, what would have happened if the church would have not come together? Peter would have died. Tragedy, 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 tragedy. But the power of God stepped in through God's people. Man, guys, we're not just a, a gathering of people. We are a family. Do you guys hear that? We are a family. We have something special because we have the Spirit of God. None of us are perfect. None of us have it all figured out. There's no big shots here, okay? If I ever become a big shot, you knock me down, okay? I am not a big shot. I might be the one that has a position at that pulpit that does not make me a big shot. All we are is brothers and sisters. And sometimes our brothers and sisters get drug out. And when they do, we come together. We stand together. We serve together. Because God is not through with that church and he's not through with us. I love the power of the church because there's a world out there that needs us. 